Hello there, this is Candace from The Hot Bohemian, and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make hand-stamped cuff bracelets. So these pieces right here are from my collection that I sell, and I also offer custom handmade cuffs online. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to make a silver or aluminum cuff. So here are some of the basic tools that we're going to need to be metal stamping our piece. There are a couple more um, tools that we will need to use, but I'll pull those out towards the end when we put our finishing touches on the piece. So over here on my left, I have a Impress Art metal bending bar. This runs about $12 and it comes with metal um, bracelet stamping blanks. So you kind of get a little pack with that. This one right here was a more expensive piece and this is the bracelet um, shaper, bending player shaper, and it comes with nylon jaws here. This was run runs about 15 to $20, but you're gonna need this and I'll show you why you will need this piece um, towards the end. But this is by Beadsmith and I found this on Amazon. You need a steel block they sell these at Joann's, Michael's, any any craft center. Um, but this one was specially made. The one that you that I first bought was this very small metal block, and it doesn't really have a large surface area, so it's hard to, you know, lay out a long piece for a bracelet. This small piece right here was around thirteen dollars. Um, so, like I said, I had that one specially made for me, and it works just fine. Next, you're going to need a set of letters for your stamping. Again, you can find these at um, Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby. Um, these are just the very basic set, and I'm using this one today because my customer who I'm making this bracelet for requested the basic font. So what's cool about um, Michaels and, and Hobby Lobby and Joanna's if you have one of their 50% off coupons you can essentially essentially get a set for half of the cost which is nice because they can run pricey so one of these sets right here and impress art comes in a nice container and you also get a couple symbols down here this retails for 50 and with the coupon you can get this for um, $25 which is which is a really good deal so next I have two hammers this is the one I used to strike the the metal letters onto the the piece of aluminum and then this one right here I use to put a texture into my into the metal I like the look of a hammered texture on my bracelets so this is what I use I use the um, rounded side here so those are the immediate tools that we're going to be using. So there are also different sizes of metal you can use. So we have a small, it's about six inches, um, and I believe it's five millimeters. And then we have a more medium piece, same same length. Um, I'm gonna, I think this one's about ten. And then we have an even larger cuff piece right here that these are all used for making cups um, this one I would say about 20 I, will, I would say about 18 18 millimeters so I'm using the small one this is what I normally make the cuffs with I mean this is the width on your wrist this one's not too bad it's just a lot of surface area and there's more room for error trying to make your letter straight when you go bigger. So it's easier to guide your metal when you're using the skinny uh, fourth inch piece of aluminum right here. So that's what I'm going to be using today. So before I begin stamping anything, there is a blue film on these pieces of aluminum that you want to peel off. So I'm just going to peel off the one side um, so the back side doesn't get marred up when I am metal stamping this. So what I'm going to do first is, before I even stamp any letters, before I go any further, I first hammer 
the texture into the into the metal so I'm going to this, this is gonna get a little loud but I'm going to just start at one end and begin hammering until I get all the way to the other end so I'm gonna go ahead and do this now loud parts over somewhat but so what I did essentially here was make a really cool texture onto this piece and so just by hammering it kind of reflects the light and another reason why I like to hammer is because it doesn't show scratches aluminum is a soft metal it won't rust or corrode or tarnish but it will scratch rather easily so I put the um, the divots in it because it makes it shiny and it looks nice it's another added added uh, feature on there so you use this and you just kind of go down the whole line of the bracelet and that's the first step before we even stamp any letters in it it might warp um, so this one's kind of not fully straight but it's pretty straight but you can just bend it back to where you feel that it's straight. Okay, so then the next step, I write out the word. So this one right here, I'm making for a customer and it says I pinky promise. And then I count from either side till I find the middle. I use spaces and letters together. So um, the, the space and the S until I get to the, to the middle piece. And this is to make sure your word is gonna be in the middle of your bracelet. Um, so then when they wear it, it's gonna be where it should be. And then I take a ruler, and this should be six inches. So what I do is wherever my three inches is, I'm just gonna draw a line so I know where to begin. Okay. So now I have my hammered piece, and I found my middle. I'm gonna use my regular hammer here. You don't have to buy the fancy $20 brass hammer. This works just fine. And so I laid out my letters already. Um, and so I'm just gonna use them from here. Now with this set, it's not marked on which direction. Usually with the more expensive ones, it tells you, you know, there's like a mark here that it tells you to, you know, stamp it this, this way. So you kind of just have to be careful that you don't stamp it sideways. I've had, I actually teach classes on metal stamping. I've had um, some students stamp sideways or upside down. So just be conscious of where you're stamping. Okay, so this I'm gonna use as my guide. I know I'm starting here in the middle. I'm, I like to go from the right side and finish off. And then from the left, we are gonna be working backwards. So it gets a little tricky when you're going left. So I'm gonna start with the P. And so I have my P here. I'm gonna use what's called the tap and tilt method. So I will put my P right on the side of the line. And while I hammer, I'm going to be moving and rocking this kind of in a back and forward motion like this. And for me, that's the easiest, um, a lot of tutorials I've watched, it's just one big hit. For me, I don't hit it hard enough, so then I would have to kind of go back in and try to re-hammer the P or whatever letter I'm using to make it deep enough. So I like the tap and tilt. Also with aluminum, it's a soft metal. If you hit it too hard and you go to bend the bracelet, it will break in half. Um, I've had that happen to multiple students while I was teaching classes. So just be aware of how hard you're hitting it um, these are fairly inexpensive, so you can, um, you know, if you mess up on one, that's okay. Just use it as a practice piece um, or just have a practice piece for you to practice, um, you know, metal stamping. And so I'm going to put my P here and then I'm going to do the tap and tilt method. So this will be my first letter. And it's okay if you can't see the P. Um, we will darken it in later. I think a lot of people hit it hard so they can see it. And it's okay if you can't. 
So I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple good whacks. Okay. So this is what the P, so I have my P here. And so from the P, I'm going to use this as a guide for my next letter, which is the R. Um, here is my R. So I'm, what I do is I try to line up the top letter here with the P. So I'll bend it down until I feel like it's right next to it. Right, so there's my R. So it's looking pretty good. I think, um, you know, if you continue with trying to line it up with the top of the previous letter, you're gonna get more of a straight saying or phrase, whatever you're putting on your bracelet. So from here, PR, I'm gonna continue with the, um, the Amis. So the O. Sometimes, if I'm not sure the directions, the direction that the stamp's going, I'll um, imprint it on something so I can see which way I'm going to be stamping. So a lot of, a lot of people will use guide tape. For me, I just use the previous letter as my guide. So here's Promise. So it's pretty straight, it looks pretty good. Um, these letters are the basic font, and I find that they are very straight letters, um, and it's easier to see if a letter is kind of either crooked or, um, you know, higher or lower. There are more whimsical fonts you can use that you can't really tell if it's maybe just a little tilted or slanted. I prefer using those ones, but I mean, these ones are definitely more, um, you know, a basic, basic font. All right, so now I'm going to be working from right to left. So I'm going to start with my Y. So now I'm, I'm um, going backwards on my word. So just be aware that you're, you know, it's easy to, for me, I find it's easier to spell them when I'm going in the right direction. But going backwards, sometimes I get a little tripped up. I've, I've mixed letters up before. So I'm starting with my Y. I'm just going to go on the, the left side of this line. Trying to line it up with that P. We'll see how this turns. Perfect. Okay. So then I'm going to continue here. The K is a little tricky sometimes. So I like this saying, this is cute. Um, and like I said, I had a customer order of this, but a pinky promise, I like that. That's a, that's a good one to put on a bracelet. All right, finishing up the last two letters here. All right. 
So we are finished stamping. So if you can see here, I pinky promise. So what I'm going to do, this is the, the fun part is when we can blacken it in to see our results. And so I use an industrial strength Sharpie, as simple as it sounds, super permanent. Um, you can use chemicals. I do have this, what's called Jack Silver Blackener. I don't use it on um, these pieces, but you can. Um, I think the Sharpie makes it darker. So I continue to use the Sharpie. And then all you do is just really get in. It doesn't have to be pretty. Get into the grooves. Okay. Then what you're going to need is a paper towel. And some rubbing alcohol. So you want to take your rubbing alcohol and then just wipe away and then we should get a nice imprint. So it is darker, I pinky promise. And I love how that shines. Okay, next is the fun part. We are going to be bending the bracelet and what you're gonna do is take that, put these away. this fun bending bar bracelet. And what we do is you take one end, hold it with your thumb, and then we're gonna bend this over. You're guiding it with your other hand. And this is where a lot of the times it breaks when people go too deep. When you bend it, it kinda just cracks right in half. Then you're gonna flip it and do it this way. Okay, so we have a basic shape of a bracelet, but it's not very even. It doesn't look very pretty. So that's where these guys come in, come in handy. So you're going to take the curved part up at the top and you're just going to bend all the way around. Until you get a more even bracelet. And so aluminum is adjustable. So, you know, these are one size cuff. I'm sure you can special order smaller ones, um, maybe on Etsy or Amazon, but these are a standard six inch. And so this is the end result. So I pinky promise. And then the customer can kind of bend in, but I'm going to let it stay how it is and let the customer bend it in. So um, if you have any questions or need something further explained, just let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.